Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get started with OpenTelemetry in .NET and in this specific example I'm going to use Grafana and Prometheus however keep in mind these are not the only ways you can use OpenTelemetry with in fact OpenTelemetry is just the standard for collecting all those stats about our application and then how we export them and how we visualize them can change in many different ways. I'm going to choose free and open source options for you just because I want you to be able to grab the code from the description down below and start immediately pushing stuff into Grafana so you can visualize them if you want to and both of those tools are being used in production extensively but know that they're also paid versions that are managed and they're way prettier with the way they visualize stuff and the way they collect stuff but they're also more expensive. Now, open telemetry is the way you should be doing telemetry in your application. So if you're using something like app metrics or any other way of doing this, really what you're going to see in this video is how you want to move forward doing metrics in your applications because that's the agreed cloud standard. Keep in mind, this is not a Microsoft specific thing. Any application can use open telemetry and any application can do metrics and spans and stats in general in the exact same way, which is the whole point of having this open telemetry standard. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a .NET API, which is a weather API generating some built-in fake weathers and then returning them, calling the weather forecast endpoint. And then I have a weather app.web service, which is a Blazor application that allows me to visualize that weather. And as you might have noticed already, I also have two extra projects for .NET Aspire. Now, if you don't know what .NET Aspire is, that's fine. You don't really need to know to watch or use any of that. The reason why I'm going to use Don Aspire is because I want to have a distributed system with metrics from multiple applications and Don Aspire allows me to do that very, very easily. And it is sort of the future of .NET in terms of running .NET applications. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm going to put a link in the description down below where I talk about it extensively, just in case you haven't caught up. And if you want to run a .NET Aspire system, which means both of my applications that communicate with each other, all I have to do is run this app host. And again, the code is down below. If you need anything you'll see in this video, it will be down below. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it. And what you're going to see by default is that .NET Aspire comes with this nice dashboard. All I care about is running my front end. So here you can see my front end and I get the weather. This weather is from the API. And if I keep refreshing, I have a Redis cache. So the weather is cached for a few seconds. And then if I refresh enough times, the weather will change. And as you're able to see here, I have some traces, I have some metrics, but none of that is actually populated. That's because we're going to populate all that from scratch together. Now, one thing I want to mention is you won't learn how to do this to visualize it with a .NET Aspire dashboard because the .NET Aspire dashboard is not deployed to production. It's meant to be a local thing. In production, you're going to have your metrics exported with Prometheus and you're going to have them visualized with Grafana. And we're going to run all of them using Kubernetes because I want to show you how in a distributed system you can have both your applications and your monitoring or visualization technology all together without having to go through the trouble of installing multiple things. So let me show you how you can get started with this. Now, .NET Aspire comes with this service default project, which has this extensions.cs file in it. And all we really do with this is we call it at the top of each application we want to use some service defaults. In this case, the service defaults we care about in this specific example is register open telemetry for my application. So this add service default call on the web app and the equivalent of this on the API will contain for both of my applications now the configure open telemetry call. Now, as you can see, this configure open telemetry call is empty. We're going to write all of that from scratch. Now, what do you need to get started with OpenTelemetry? Well, you need a few NuGet packages. Now, the way the OpenTelemetry NuGet package is, is broken down is that if I search for OpenTelemetry, yes, you can have the core library in the API, but really those don't really have anything other than abstractions. What you want to use is use a combination of instrumentation packages, which allow you to instrument parts of your application to start collecting some metrics, also exporters to export your metrics in some way. For example, double telemetry protocol, Jaeger, console, and in memory, a bunch of other options. And also you can have extensions on existing 
uh, things, for example, the hosting library, because we're running a web host because those are both web servers. Well, I can get started by adding this package over here, the opentelemetry.extensions.hosting. Now, what do I want to instrument? Like I said, both of them are ASP.NET Core. So I want to have the opentelemetry.instrumentation.asp.NET Core. Then I'm using an HTTP client to communicate from the web app to the API. So I'm going to use the opentelemetry.instrumentation.http that allows me to have metrics for the HTTP client. Then I'm also going to use the runtime to get some metrics about the .NET runtime. And then I'm going to get the default exporter of OpenTelemetry protocol. So sort of the generic one. Now, if you are using something like gRPC and you want to instrument your gRPC client, you would install uh, the gRPC one, which is in preview for now because gRPC is not as popular as let's say REST, for example, but you can add that and so on. And now what we haven't added is an exporter for Prometheus because we want to export those metrics to Prometheus, which then Grafana will go ahead and use to display everything and collect everything in the dashboard or in any other way to visualize or raise alerts or whatever. So the specific Prometheus exporter for ASP.NET Core that is still in preview, but it's pretty good. It's in RC actually. So open telemetry.exporter.prometheus.asp.net Core. And that wraps all the NuGet packages we will need. I know it is a lot. If we take a look at the CS Pro, you'll see there's plenty, but once you install them, you don't need to touch them ever again, unless you need to upgrade them, of course. And then you can go ahead and start configuring OpenTelemetry. So where can we add OpenTelemetry? Well, we can actually instrument the iLogger to collect traces and spans appropriate to the log messages we collect. So what we can say is builder.logging.addOpenTelemetry and then we can configure a few things about that. For example, I want to include scopes in my logger and I also want to include uh, formatted messages here. And that's it. Now our logger provider for OpenTelemetry is registered. This means every time I do logger or ilogger dot log information, log warning, whatever, that information will be captured in an open telemetry fashion and then exported wherever I need it. Then we can go to the core of the open telemetry registration, which is the builder.services.add open telemetry, a top level where we're going to add all the necessary services. And we're going to say with metrics, because in open telemetry, you have metrics and tracing. So we're going to configure metrics first. You have things like span and so on, logs. You have plenty of things, but we're going to start with metrics, which is probably what you're most familiar with, especially if you used something like app metrics before. We're going to say X here, and then we're going to add the runtime instrumentation that comes from that runtime package. And then we're going to also say add meter and we're going to add some custom meters we want because we have to be explicit about which meters we want to start consuming or exposing. Now, those meters will be the following. We would need to have the ASP.NET Core.hosting one to get all the hosting related stuff, all the hosting related metrics. Then we're interested in the server itself. So in this case, it's Kestrel. So we're going to add the Kestrel metrics. We're also interested in any HTTP requests being fired. And for that, we're going to use the system.net.http, which is coming from that HTTP package we added. And then in the end, because I actually have some custom metrics in my weather API, and I'm doing that using, as you can see uh, over here, uh, the iMeter factory that was introduced in .NET 8 or 7, I think it is 8, and I have a dedicated video on how we did all that. So again, description down below, uh, then I'm going to also expose those in here. And then what I want to do is I want to say with tracing, so let's add some tracing configuration as well. So we can say add ASP.NET Core instrumentation. We can also say uh, add gRPC instrumentation if you're using gRPC. And we can also say add HTTP client instrumentation as well. So both metrics and tracing. Now, if you're in development and you can afford to do this mainly for debug reasons, what you can do is you can say build environment dot is development and you can say set sampler always on sampler. Now, this would be very expensive to do in production, but for here, this is fine. This will make your developer experience better. So after we configured all that, what we need to configure here is the exporters, the way to export those metrics. And for that, I'm going to say add open telemetry exporters, which is a method right below this one. And we're going to start writing the code for it. Now, the way default Aspire does this is a bit interesting because what it does is it checks if we have a configuration parameter 
called OTEL, which stands for Open Telemetry, OTEL LTP endpoint. And if it doesn't exist, then we don't use the Open Telemetry exporter. But if it does exist, we do use it. So because we're going to run this through .NET Aspire, we're going to have it. So what I'm going to say is go ahead and if you use the Open Telemetry exporter, configure the Open Telemetry logger options, the meter provider, and the tracer provider so we can have everything wired up correctly. And really, this is something you should be using. But the thing is, we will also use Prometheus on top of that. So if you haven't done this already up here, where you say with metrics and you can say add Prometheus exporter, what you can do is you can go down here and say builder.services.add open telemetry. Don't worry, I know we've called this already up here. This will not override any of the configuration. We'll just add on top of it. And we're going to say with metrics and then add Prometheus exported to export those metrics to Prometheus. And then the last thing we need to do here is actually map an endpoint to export and allow the scraping to happen for those Prometheus metrics. We can do that by going at the very top over here of this map default endpoints method, which is called in both the API and the web app and say app dot map Prometheus scraping endpoint. And we're going to use default for everything. So believe it or not, with that in place, we have open telemetry wired up. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to run the application and show all that in the built-in dashboard. Not Grafana and Prometheus yet, but just the built-in functionality, which is using that open telemetry thing that we registered over here. So if I go to the dashboard, you're going to see that now in traces, I have two options, front-end and web API. And if I select any of them, of course, I will need a few requests on them. So let's go ahead and call them a few times. Here we go. So if we go back to traces now, you can see all those traces. You can view any of them and you can see exactly what happened. A Redis cache call here, a Redis cache. Let's see what is here. Set X to set a value, get a value, get the weather forecast and so on. Structural logs, all of them are here. And then all the metrics for each application with nice uh, overtime graphs. All that is done possible through the open telemetry exporter, which we added and Aspire will use. However, depending on how you run this in production, you might not have that. You might only have the Prometheus one. So how would we run this in a production like environment? Well, if I was to run an Aspire application, I would run it like I run all of my applications in Kubernetes, because that's sort of the standard for running containerized applications through an orchestrator. And the way I'm going to do this is I have Minikube installed on my machine and I have a cluster running on my machine so I can deploy in this cluster, which you can see over here in Lens. I have no applications now, but I can deploy and I can deploy that by using Aspirate, which is a project that allows me to generate all the necessary Kubernetes files and then push all that into Kubernetes very easily with a single command. In fact, if I want to deploy everything you see right now, all I'm going to say is aspirate and then apply. I've already generated everything and I already have a video on this topic on how to deploy using aspirate. So you want to check that. I'm going to put a link in the description down below. Check that out. I just deployed three applications. So as you can see here, I have three pods and I can click on the front end. This is running in Kubernetes again. And if I forward this endpoint, as you can see, this is now running in Kubernetes with the Redis cache and an API. I'm going to quickly just say destroy and take down all of those applications and provision them. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Now, you don't have to know Kubernetes to follow along and you don't have to use Kubernetes to follow along on any of this, but it is a skill I think every developer should have. And that's why we just launched on Dome Train a brand new course by Dan Clark, who did the Docker course previously. If you haven't taken that, I highly recommend you get up to speed with Docker with that. But now Dan released his Kubernetes for developer course covering everything there is to know for Kubernetes as the developer. And you can go from knowing nothing about Kubernetes all the way to professional level proficiency to go in a company and actually use Kubernetes and apply and deploy immediately. It's an amazing course. I'm going to put a link in the description and the first 200 of you can use discount code cube 20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. Don't miss this opportunity. This course is honestly fantastic and it's how I refreshed my memory and actually learned new things on Kubernetes. Highly recommended. But now if I want to add extra containers in .NET Aspire, which I need because I need to run Prometheus, which is a service, and Grafana, which is another service. How do I do this? Well, I'll show you a technique that was shown in the .NET blog initially that allows us to mix those containers and those services in here using the app host of .NET Aspire. So what I want to show you is I actually have two folders over here that you can't see in the solution 
a Prometheus one and the Grafana one. One has the dashboard and configuration about Grafana, and the other one has the Prometheus configuration. Again, you can grab all that from the description down below. But this means I can now push them into the respective containers in Aspire and have all the configuration done by default, including my dashboards. Now to do this, I will do the following in Aspire. I'm going to say Grafana over here, and then I'm going to say builder.add container because we don't have an add Grafana call. So add container. So which container we're going to call it Grafana over here. And then the image name is Grafana Grafana. Then what I'm going to do is mount a few things. So the first thing I need is with volume mount uh, the config folder into the Grafana folder and then the dashboards folder into the Grafana dashboards folder. And then to wrap it all up, I'm going to say with endpoint and I'm going to say container port 3000, host port 3000, name Grafana, HTTP, and then scheme. Here we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing for Prometheus. So add the container, add the volume, and configure the endpoint. And that is it. Now I can take this Grafana reference and I can add it to whatever project I want. In this case, I'm going to add in both. You might not need in both. This basically will just add an environment variable of where the Grafana dashboard is located. And I'm going to get the endpoint using the name of my Grafana endpoint, which as you can see, is this one over here. So pretty, pretty neat. Now I could just run this as a normal dot and as part application. So I can go here and say, go ahead and run the app host directly. And if I do that, I still get the nice dashboard. And as you can see, now we have a Prometheus and a Grafana container here. So if I go to Grafana or actually let's go to the front end first and run a few requests. Here we go. And then I can go to Grafana, which is where I'm visualizing those metrics. And as you can see now, I can see everything about this API. If I keep hitting it, you can see I have the front end actually here and the back end. I can see things about them, how many connections I have, which endpoints are being hit the most. Now we call the metrics endpoint, which is exposed through, well, the whole configuration we just did and it's being called once every second. That is why you see it so frequently called over here. You can see all the HTTP requests. You can see the error rate. You can see the percentile of the request durations and you can configure everything. And you can always go and explore metrics on your own. So you can see all of the metrics of our applications, both the one I added, the weather API request count, for example, is coming in here. I can come here and do whatever I want. So say run query and you can see I've called this API twice because it was cached before. So if I call it again over here, I should see another one over here after a second. Let's wait for a second. Here you go. Another request now over here. So as you can see, we have everything in Grafana using Prometheus, using Prometheus. But what if you don't have the .NET Aspire dashboard and all that? Well, you can still run this in Kubernetes with Aspirate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, go ahead and generate me a new Aspirate configuration with all of these components. So I'm going to use Redis, Grafana, Prometheus, Weather API and Frontend. Again, if you don't know what that is, I have a dedicated video explaining everything about this. And we have the course on DOM train. Trust me when I say you really, really want to get up to speed with Kubernetes and there's no better and more up to date resource to do that. So all that now is generated and I'm going to go ahead here and say, aspirate apply. I'm going to provide the password for the secrets. And that is it. Everything we deployed now on Minikube. As you can see, it has, I can see everything here. Containers are starting. Everything has started. And I can now go ahead and say, go ahead and expose my front end first because I want to make some API calls. So here we go. The front end is running. I'm going to call it a few times. Here you go. And then I'm going to say, hey, I want to see Grafana. So let's click on that. Let's say expose Grafana as well. Open it. Here you go. It's opened. It's admin, admin by default. So let's skip that and go ahead in the dashboard. And now you can go ahead if you want to and you can configure everything about your dashboards. As you can see, we have no dashboards. The dashboards were not picked up in this case and pushed into Grafana running in Kubernetes. However, what you can do is you can create a dashboard and we can actually import a dashboard using a JSON file. Again, if you want to see all that description down below, you're going to find all of these JSON files. I'm going to go ahead and import it. That does mean, however, you're going to have to configure your Prometheus and Kubernetes endpoints a bit. But depending on how you run this, this can be very, very easy. And what you can also do with Aspirate actually is you can use the Compose formatter so we can create a Docker Compose with all of these services. So once we do that, what we're able to do is get a docker compose.yaml file so I can say aspirate output and I can say docker compose 
up so i don't even need kubernetes if you don't want to use it don't use it this will configure everything and now as you can see here we have redis frontend weather api prometheus and grafana so if you want any of this code you can get it for free from the description down below well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding